So now we're going to start our drill and basically what it is is you're going to throw one behind the dog and one to the side of the dog and you're going to sit, sit, hey, you're going to give them an overcast to the first bumper you threw down. And then what you're going to do is you're going to move away from the next bumper that you're going to cast to here. here. But what you want to make sure, and you're going to throw this bumper behind the dog. Sit. Sit. Here. Force a whistle, sit, but you can't accept that. Sit. Sit. Here. Sit. So I just used a very low level. Over. Okay, now we're going to move away from this bumper here. Here. And what we're doing is we're lengthening our cast. away from your throw. Sit. It's okay if they look at it and see it because you want them to remember it's there. You want them to be able to see the bumper when you're casting to it so that they keep going and they drive hard and they have good momentum on their cast. And you want to teach through success. So we use real short cover pastures so that they can see the bumpers, big white bumpers, so they sit on top of the grass. Here, sit. You also want to make sure that you line the dog up evenly with the bumper you're going to cast him to. You don't want the dog to have to come into you and then over, or else you're going to create that habit. You also don't want it to be an, act, an angle back cast, but yet you're giving an overcast. It'll make your casting a uh, less accurate. Also too, when you increase the distance between the dog and the bumper, it increases the difficulty along with the distance between yourself and the dog. When you increase the distance between yourself and the dog, it also increases the difficulty. So you can keep lengthening this out to a point where they don't become successful. And when they don't become successful, you want to simplify things. Uh, maybe shorten up your cast or get closer to the dog before you cast. Over. Now if she were to go for the wrong bumper, all I would do is stop her and recast her. And then on the next, on the next try, I would probably shorten up the distance between the dog and the bumper and give that same cast so that I could get some success. Sit. And you see she's already figured out, okay, I watched the one bumper fall down and I square myself up so that I can be casted to another bumper. She's a really good student. She's trying real hard for us. Over. All right, and she's running pretty hard, which is nice. Good girl, good girl. Now what we'll do with this drill when we're finally ready to end it. When we're finally ready to end this drill, what we'll do 
is we will throw a bumper in the opposite direction we have been throwing it. And I'll show you that. So that um, when we throw the bumper and we go back to our starting point, we're actually because that's going to create suction. She's going to remember the different areas that she went and got a bumper. So that's going to create casting for you. And ideally, um, if it doesn't, and the dog just winds right to the bumper, well then you've taught the dog to wind through the bumper. And you try to advance the dogs on that concept. Now she's stretching out pretty good for us here. She's getting a little warm. Uh, maybe. Hey, come here. Sit, sit. Maybe about, I don't know, I'd say nine or ten casts. You can probably get in with the dog on a cool day. Sit. You want them to have enough energy and enough. Uh, to not be so um, physically taxed that they don't have enough mental capacity to understand the blind and you trying to cast them and them get too hot and then ultimately it become a training session that ends on a bad note. You want to end always on a, you try to always end a training session on a positive note. I realize that you can't always do that, but hopefully more times than not, you can end on a positive training line. Over! Now what I'll do with this bumper here that I threw behind her is I will turn her back towards our original starting point and throw this bumper behind her. So that when I... Here. Come here. When I throw this bumper behind her and I go and walk back to the starting point, I'm going to be running a line to this bumper, which will be a sight line, through the two side piles that I have been doing my overcast to. Good girl. Sit. because we're getting her prepared to run a blind. Typically, these dogs that are doing this drill straight out of the three leg have really never had a semi-cold blind. In our program, we've had all uh, pattern drills and uh, pattern blinds. So this will be their first non-pattern Over. Over. Good. And you see we've got our bumper out there. Now we're going to walk back to our starting point. We also got a little road in here, which could create some complications and some more casting for us. But we'll see how she deals with it. She's had this drill a couple times, and uh, she obviously enjoys it. So we'll see how well she does.